Hey, Sean Jantz here, and I'm going to do a quick battle plan for Thursday, November 15th. And I'm going to do it on Slash GS, which is the S&P 500, and the other indices that you can find on Nadex. And I'm going to start here on Slash GS, and every single evening, I always start on the four-hour chart, as you can see right there. And that is because, as far as the day trader goes, and the four-hour chart is the most important chart to understand, is what is our bias on this four-hour chart? Are we overbought, are we oversold, or are we at equilibrium, okay? And just to recap of what's been going on for the entire month of October, we've had really, really good volatility. And I have been telling you and talking about the 2700 magnet now for the entire year. And we ended up going ahead and touching that 2700 magnet uh, today on Wednesday. Just an insane, insane uh, magnet. And so you could have used that for some just massive, massive TP targets. This, And then obviously... There was multiple times to catch demand off of that 2700 today uh, as well. So you can use it for when you you can use this 2700 for so many things. It's not going to be as relevant for tomorrow because we're literally right on top of it right now. And so, but I just wanted to recap, like uh, making sure that you're understanding how these magnets work. It is literally incredible what you can do when you find such large magnets like this. And so. Uh, knowing that when now we start looking at the content here, uh, you can clearly see last night we were mildly oversold, right? That's what I mentioned. Last night we were mildly oversold. Now that we have moved lower, we've now officially became oversold. Uh, now that does not mean that we just randomly buy, right? But what that means is technically speaking, relative to past price, this chart is oversold. And technically speaking, we should see a little bit of a bull pop uh, where we can look for possible resistance sell triggers as well. But we'll see those clear on the smaller time frames. But just know, um, it, there's nothing stopping this from continue grinding lower because there is really, really good structure down there really good demand structure. But knowing how oversold this chart is, the lower it goes, I do want to be looking for possible uh, change control, higher low uh, buy triggers the lower it goes. Now, knowing that this chart is oversold, it does have lots of room to just literally just slingshot uh, higher. So you need to be mindful of that. I'm not against looking as this or if this chart does continue to cycle up, not necessarily continue, but if this chart finally cycles up, um, I'm not against looking for little quick sell triggers that like the plus one deviation you'll see on the smaller time frame. But you just need to understand that this chart has lots of room to continue cycling. So if you do look for like an example, you look for a sell trigger in this zone right there for like a quick little worm's eye view sell trigger and it continues grinding higher, don't be crying because it's, hey, it's just a four hour candle buy trigger cycling higher. So that's why this chart is so crazy important to understand because it'll help you in your uh, smaller time frame trade. So now that we built that story, we finally finished that 2700 magnet. Okay, we now move to the 15 day, 15 minute plot chart. And what I'm doing here is I'm just looking for structure. I'm looking for the best places to buy, the best places to sell. I'm looking for support resistance supply and demand zones and what i always do is i start exactly where price is and then i start planning and visualizing what am i going to do or not do at every single zone if if this chart starts grinding higher tomorrow and then what am i going to do or not do at every single zone if this chart starts grinding lower tomorrow. So let's first, let's first talk about if we grind higher. Our first contact zone is gonna put us at that plus 0.5, but there's an issue with that looking at uh, looking at that plus 0.5 for possible, like as far as you know, plus 0.5 generally is a good place to look for sell triggers, but not this time. Why is that? Because we have a 15 day high here, we have a 15 day low here. That's literally right in the middle. There's no value uh, in being a seller right in the middle of the gray box, which is the volume profile, the value area, right? There's no there's no edge in being a seller right there. And knowing that this chart wants to continue really cycling higher, I'm gonna skip that plus 0.5 for uh, at least my money. Now, will it hold? I don't know. Uh, it might, right? Plus 0.5 is generally a good place, but it's not good enough for my money. That makes sense. I'm always finding the best zones because I work so damn hard for my money. I want to put it to work in the best, best zones. So if I were to look for sell triggers, and actually, 
before we talk about my first sell trigger zone, there will be opportunity to possibly use that plus 0.5 as a breakout. And if you wanna try and spread it up for an 80% roll or even touch that plus one, you can try and look for that. It's just gotta be very, very good on that higher low. <clears throat> Uh, the only way for me to even think about entering it would it would need a really good higher low, and then I can try for that 80% roll up in a value area high. Okay, now that is if where price currently is. If we go lower and then slingshot up, okay, it changes things. So that's I don't think people understand that where price currently is and it starts taking off. Now that's good, but if it goes lower and then starts going higher, whoa, 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 because now you need a re you need to regroup and, and really see what's going on uh, on the uh, content there, okay? And so if, it, let's say you missed the 80% rule, no big deal, here is my first sell trigger zone. There's quite a bit of structure here, lots of change control, lots of volume, plus one deviation, Wednesday, Tuesday. We just need to get up into there and then I find my change control lower high for my quick little sell trigger. So that that's where I'd wanna be looking for some carrot trades or even some set divergence convergence down, okay? And then, yes, there is opportunity for this sucker just to, can you, to continue busting because this chart has all of the room to run to about 27.75, which that's gonna put us uh, up here, that'd be roughly a plus two deviation. So there is room on that bird's eye view to run up into there. So just be mindful of that. That's why if I look for anything for sell triggers here, it needs to be so freaking fast. Get in and get out because you don't want to get whipsawed from that four hour chart continuing to grind higher. Now if we go lower, it's pretty simple and clear cut. The lower we go, more oversold we're going to be. So I want to be looking for buy triggers. I got the negative and a half for my first uh, touch higher low change control and then my second higher low change control off of the negative one And if you do go below negative one, we will have structure down there So let's say you don't see change control. You don't see change control. I'm still looking for demand I just do that do the math for the negative one and a half Will roughly be you know 26 38 I believe somewhere around there 26 it'd be about 17 points. So 26 30 uh, seven, is that right? Just do the math right to get the negative one and a half and there is gonna be structure there. So I would just wait for one of these to show higher low change control, stay at the money, get a quick little bull pop and then TP. So pretty simple if we go lower, be mindful of what's going on on the larger time frames if we go uh, higher. So uh, quickly move to slash and Q. It's almost the exact same. Skip plus 0.5. Uh, I don't see uh, I don't see value in doing anything there. There would be my first sell trigger zone up into that uh, plus one two POC cluster, and there is a big round number 6900 sitting there as well. Same thing as DS though. This four hour chart has lots of room to cycle, so just be mindful. If you sell here, it could just continue grinding on you, and that's from the bird's eye view buy trigger cycling back up. So anything you do up there, if you're gonna look for sell triggers, just be really, really fast. And as far as demand, it's the same thing as ES. We got the first demand zone, second demand zone. Um, and then slash RTY. This actually has some pretty good contacts. Again, skip plus 0.5, but if that sucker breaks out, holds higher lows, possible 80% roll to the upside if you can catch it. And then we got first sell trigger zone plus one, second sell trigger zone, roughly Tuesday POC. And then same thing, first demand, second demand. Uh, so pretty simple. This chart has relatively, all three charts have relatively pretty good context. So uh, make sure that you're taking pictures of all of your trades. Post them in the group and in the chat room so that you can get feedback from me and from others.